Okay, today we're going to be doing the tails and feet of the freshwater turtle. And the tail is pretty straightforward. It's um, just a simple couple of lines here and then just a little bit of scaling. Again, um, what I would say is a lot of the color is going to be masking a lot of the scale texture. So um, this is kind of just a, a, I guess you could say, um, sort of like a practice for if you wanted to do this and, um, and not, you know, focus on the color themselves. Um, you can use this as sort of a texture sort of tutorial as well as um, just something to do before you lay down your color so that you have the scaling in there. So what you do is you just start with um, just some simple lines here and there's a little bit of a curve in the tail sometimes and there's pretty, um, uh, they're pretty variable. I mean tails are a little bit flexible. Um, you know, they can be straight, they can curve, and they can tuck them in. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about that because in general when you look at a turtle, they'll kind of show you what they're doing with their tail. Um, they're not too difficult. The only thing I would really be concerned about is the texture of the scales and the color. But for right now we're just doing uh, the scaling. So you'll start with a central line of scales down here. And they're pretty simple, they're not anything fancy, you know, any specialized sort of scales. And then you just sort of build on that. And the other thing with turtle tails is that more often than not, you're going to have the males have the larger and longer tails than the females. The females' tails are a lot shorter, a lot closer to um, the end of the shell. And um, they're, the males tend to have a much fatter tail, too. Um, and that's, uh, that's a pretty common thing across many turtle species, is that the male will have the longer, fatter tail than the female. The female doesn't have a real large tail at all. So that's real simple. Um, you can do straight line tail, like when they're swimming or you can curl it, you know, it's it's a very simple appendage and you'll get to know it, you know, as, as you watch turtles, like if you have a pet turtle, you'll definitely see how that, you know, tail behaves, how they move it and whatnot. So not too big of a big deal. Um, the the, uh, the four limbs um, are another thing. Um, again, there's a difference between male and female. This is the female foreclaw, and this is the male foreclaw. Um, they generally, the males generally have these long foreclaws um, for their mating ritual, in which they vibrate their claws in front of a female um, to entice her to mate with him. And another thing with freshwater turtles is that the webbing between the toes is not as big or as apparent as it is in the back, the back legs. The back legs actually have more webbing. So anyway, we'll start with um, this leg here. And this is a female leg <clears throat> of a freshwater turtle. And you just sort of start with, almost like you're doing a comical pie pie type arm. They ha kind of have these big forearms here and then they're upper arm is kind of skinny and then uh, you have the fingers or digits if you want to call them spread out you can just start with lines here to begin and then move out from there and you can kind of uh, flesh them out Add the nails. And then the webbing is pretty easy. It's kind of rounded. Um, 
and the pigmentation uh, between the toes actually kind of bleeds onto the webbing a little bit. Um, you'll notice that in some of the colors in uh, certain species. And then there's a little bit of scaling on the toes. They're almost like bird feet, but not quite. And then as you go up, the scales start to kind of blend with each other. Um, on the sides, they do have these more armor-like scales that are uh, that have the sharper edges here on the sides of their arms. And they go up to about the end of the forearm here. And they're a lot more prominent than the scales in the rest of the arm here. Again, they're on this side as well. And then for the rest of this uh, scaling process here, it's pretty simple um, the way I kind of do it. Um, you just sort of build on it with a simple scaling texture. apologize that's my dog she's upset because I have her in here with me and she wants to go out okay I'm gonna finish up with the male foreclaw again I've started with um, the sort of pie pie inspired forearm and then I'll go with my digits And there's a few of the fingers here that are longer than the two outer fingers. Just be aware of that. And you can go ahead and add the nails at this point because uh, you might as well because you're going to get bogged down with all the texture you're really doing. I made that nail too long. I'm kind of drawing over the other arm but that's okay. And then these outer claws, again, have the shortest nails. And then you finish up with your webbing. Okay. And then you do like the bird feet on the digits. And the scales on the side, the armor-like scales.
Okay, and then you'll finish up by doing the rest of the scaling on the rest of the forearm. And again, if you're practicing, you can do this texture loosely. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that's how you do the four claws and the tails. Okay, we're going to do the back legs now. Um, one thing to notice is that uh, the webbing is much more apparent when the toes are stretched out and they kind of um, when they're folded together, the uh, webbing actually does not seem as apparent. Um, this is one position where the leg is sort of kind of lax, but not completely folded in. And this is more of a stretched out leg with the toes stretched out. I thought that would be good to add, um, just to kind of show you the difference between um, the ways that the webbing looks and behaves, as well as um, the position of the leg, how that changes when it comes to basking. They often stretch their legs all the way back, so you definitely see more of that. Anyway, um, there is some of the rougher scales on the side here. Um, there's also some scales in between skin that you can kind of see here in the texture. It's all a little bit different on the back legs than it is on the fore. Um, that's just to kind of give you an idea of that. But we'll go ahead and start with the leg. It's the same thing. Um, sort of pie pie proportions and the upper the upper leg sort of being skinny looking and then as you go down it sort of almost uh, looks like ridiculous with muscle or something but it's not that's just the way they're built and then you go down into the digits and you can start with little lines for the digit like you did with the four claws and sometimes um, one of the feet will kind of, one of the toes will actually be hiding, so you can kind of fold that in there and you won't see the claw. And you can start doing your nails. The nails on these back feet are usually not very lengthy, um, so you can put them in. And then you can start doing your textures with um, the toes. Start somewhat like bird legs again. And you can put in uh, most of the most apparent or the mo more um, obvious details, like the larger scales that show up. And um, do you like this? And they go up the back side of this leg here. And then there are some that are in between. They sort of line up with some of the toes, so just keep that in mind. And just move up the line. And then there are some folds in skin here toward the front here. And uh, you can just sort of add lines for scaling. And then as you go up the leg, there's less texture. There's a little bit of lining in the skin, not as much scaling. And then there's a little bit of lines here, a little bit of folded skin there. And then you can do some lines in between for the folded skin that's webbing. 
and that's how you do one back leg. Just add a little bit more there. And then with this one leg stretched out, you just start with your lines again. And with this, your toes are actually spread out a little more, so you're going to do different with the uh, digits. Okay, I'm just going to finish up the black legs here. This is the second back leg that I've drawn, and it's the one with more of the stretched out toes. The webbing is more apparent. The leg is a little more extended. So I've already drawn the lines for this particular leg. You start out again with the same um, larger forelimb and sort of skinny elbow or knee. Um, draw your toes, webbing, and nails, and then you go and you approach the same way you did with the other leg. You uh, approach the toes like bird feet a little bit, like what you did before. Again, you'll have rougher scales along the side here and the heel. Another good idea if you kind of want to practice doing um, any of these tutorials is uh, to take a drawing, um, maybe of your own or of somebody else's and put it side by side with um, your sketchbook or your piece of paper and actually work from that um, and that will really help you to practice get down what you need um, in terms of the uh, proportions and whatnot of um, whatever anatomy you're working on. Um, I know that it's helped me more than one occasion so I definitely suggest it and um, even drawing something on your own um, and if you get it right the first time, just to keep practicing, you can draw it right next to the other uh, image that you've drawn. Um, that's basically what I've done here for this tutorial. And you can practice and you'll get better as you practice, um, as you improve skill. And again, um, definitely suggest references from living models. Um, good HD pictures if you can get them. Um, there's plenty of places online um, to get those. Uh, some places make you pay for them. Um, you don't have to do that. You, you can get them uh, through different sources that are free. I'll actually see if I can link a few in the uh, description for you. But yeah, you have some sort of um, scales between the skin on uh, this leg like you did the other one before especially on this side and then past the folds of skin here um, around the toes um, you can do more of the line texture because um, the scales uh, are smaller on that area and it almost looks like it's more like a lining and the skin and sket instead of the actual scales. If you really want an interesting uh, pair of legs and feet to do on a turtle, I I have not done this myself yet, but I would suggest a snapping turtle or even. Um, uh, a soft shell turtle. They have some really interesting textures, especially the snapping turtles. Um, they've got a lot of spiky features on them and it's just really good practice for texture and um, 
shading and whatnot. That's it's just they've got a lot to work with on them. Not just their legs, but their face and everything. I mean, they're pretty unique looking. Definitely prehistoric. But yeah, you can just finish up here, and that's pretty much all you've got to do. My only other um, comment would be in the shading in here. Um, after I finish this, it's just a few lines, maybe a little bit of shading, not too much. Um, just sort of implied lines in some of the webbing. Um, the webbing in here, um, it's it's not. It's actually kind of rounded um, on some of this area um, when they do stretch it out. Um, it's not like um, almost like a spider web pattern where it's sort of like that between the lines, if, if that's an example. But it's more like a, um, a very rounded sort of paddle shape. That's one thing I've noticed with um, my turtle that I have. Um, He's, uh, he's definitely able to use his back legs as a paddle, and it's much more rounded than it does have those um, more spiny looking webbing. So yeah, that's your basic um, turtle leg tutorial. Um, the tail was also included earlier. Um, but that's it. That's pretty much all you've got to do. Um, again, I'll link some uh, sites where you can get some decent stock images to use uh, for your references and thanks again for watching.